Good evening, everybody. This is Austin Sylvie from the Evening Sports page on the Sound Off podcast, updating you on the South Carolina Clemson baseball series that started tonight at Founders Park in Columbia, South Carolina. Obviously, it it ended in a weird way, but this was a pitcher's game, no doubt. Eight total hits on the game. So, obviously, the, the pitching was the biggest thing. But it came down to the last play. Clemson was on the wrong end of a 3-2 defeat to South Carolina. Game was tied at two. South Carolina batting in the bottom of the ninth. T.J. Hopkins sack fly scored the run for South Carolina. Danny Blair came in from third. And, well, Jonah Bride, originally he got to first. And on a throwing error from the pitcher, Riley Gilliam, to first base, he was able to advance to third, which... And then Blair came in to pinch run, which ultimately was the the straw that broke the Clemson Camels back. But, I mean, pitching was strong on both sides. South Carolina pitchers struck out 16 total. Clemson Tigers sat down just four. But it was a, a really good game from Jacob Hennessy as well when it comes to pitching. This was just a really well-played game. Eddie Demurius gets the win for South Carolina. He went one and two third innings, closed the game out. He allowed zero hits, zero runs, struck out two, walked none. Sawyer Bridges threw one third of an inning in relief out of the bullpen for the Gamecocks. Riley Gilliam takes the loss for Clemson. It's his first loss of the season as well as Clemson's first loss. He lasted one and a third inning, allowing one hit, one run while striking out two. Uh, Adam Hill started the game for South Carolina, obviously. He surrendered two runs on a big home run to right field from Seth Beer after Logan Davidson advanced to first on a walk. I believe he was walked three times tonight. So he was able to get on base for the Tigers. But Adam Hill, 14 strikeouts for the second consecutive start. Obviously, last Friday against Charleston Southern, he also struck out 14 batters. And was able to do it against Clemson again tonight. Chris Williams and Seth Beer each collected one hit for Clemson. LT Tolbert went two for four at the plate for South Carolina, leading them in hits. So obviously this was a pitcher's game. But just to go over some of the uh, the stats, Logan Davidson, one at bat, walked three times, scored one run. Seth Beer, one for four. One run, two RBIs, and a strikeout. And Chris Williams, one for four with one strikeout. No other Tiger batters got hits tonight. There was only two hits total in the game. If that tells you anything about how well South Carolina's pitching staff pitched tonight. And for South Carolina batters, you had TJ Hopkins 0 for 4, but he had the game-winning RBI on the sack fly. Uh, Matt Williams, the the savior almost for South Carolina in the bottom of the eighth. Matt Williams comes in to pinch hit for Justin Rowe. He takes a ball on the first pitch, second pitch, sends it over the right field wall to tie the game up at two. Uh, South Carolina was trailing in the bottom of the eighth, two to one. That home run tied it up. So great move by Kingston and company to put him in the game at that time because it worked out, and he, he blasted that ball out of the park. Uh, you had LT Tolbert, like I mentioned, two for four on the night, leading hitter. Chris Cullen went one for three with an RBI. Jonah Bride went one for three with a run and a walk. Or, excuse me, Chris Cullen did not have an RBI. He, had, he went one for three with a walk, and Jonah Bride went one for three with a walk, and he scored a run. Danny Blair also scored a run, pinch hit or pinch running. And that was the game-winning run, of course. Uh, Jacob Olson went 0 for 4. Hunter Taylor went 1 for 2. And Noah Campbell went 0 for 1 with a walk. And, like I said, story was, it was pitching. Uh, Clemson left four guys on base. South Carolina left seven on base. Uh, Jacob Hennessy stats for the night. Clemson starting pitcher went five innings through 71 pitches, 62% strikes. He gave up three hits, one run, no earned, two strikeouts, two walks, and no home runs. Owen Griffith came in for two innings of relief through 26 pitches, 62% strike percentage, gave up two hits, a run, one earned, and a home run. Obviously, that was the Matt Williams home run. Then you had Matt Clark come in, face Carlos Cortez, just one batter through three pitches, and 
uh, grounded out, I believe. Riley Gilliam, obviously, he finished the game through one and one-thirds innings, 30 pitches, 60% strikes, and gave up one hit, one run, one earned, two strikeouts, two walks. And the sack fly came off of him as well. For South Carolina, Adam Hill goes seven innings, throws 110 pitches, 60% strike percentage, two hits, two runs, two earned off the Seth Beer home run after a Logan Davidson walk. And he struck out 14 again. I mean, he's got 28 strikeouts in his last two games, which is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal pitching by Adam Hill. He is obviously one of the the best pitchers South Carolina's had in a while, and they knew he could be the guy of T.L. Hanna, and they'll look for him in the future to continue to pitch the way he has. He walked two also in the Seth Beer home run. He gave up one. Sawyer Bridges came in, pitched one-third inning, threw 15 pitches, 40% strikes, walked two batters, and that's when Eddie Demuris came in. He threw for one and two-thirds innings, 24 pitches, 63% strikes, and struck out two, giving up no hits, no walks, no runs on the night. And obviously, game, the or the series, I should say, moves to Floor Field in Greenville, South Carolina, home of the Greenville Drive tomorrow afternoon. And you will be having, for South Carolina, the right-handed pitcher Cody Morris going up against Clemson's Brooke Crawford, Brooks Crawford, who is also a right-handed pitcher. And on the season, Brooks Crawford, he's nine innings pitched in two games played, and he started both those games. He's 1-0 and on the season. He's given up eight hits, two runs, both earned, and nine strikeouts while giving up zero walks. He His ERA is 2.0, and his whip is 889 on the season. Uh, just a couple more advanced stats. He's faced 34 batters, thrown 128 pitches, 86 strikes, which is a, a good amount. Then he's averaging about 14.2 innings or pitches per inning and about 3.8 per batter. Uh, he's retired 14 or 14 batters have either got on or out in three pitches or less which is uh, 41% of the batters he has faced. And he has retired five leadoff batters, and five times he has retired the first two batters he has faced in the order. And he has had four one, two, three innings, meaning he retired the side. And there's five innings he's pitched that he has thrown less than 13 total pitches. And like I mentioned earlier, he's thrown 86 total strikes of his 128 pitches, I believe, which is good for 67% strike percentage. His first pitch strikes are 23 out of 34 batters faced. So he's, he's getting ahead of a majority of the batters he's facing, 68% first strike percentage. And first, first pitch strike percentage outs meaning batters that he throws to and throws a strike, a first pitch strike, the percentage that he gets those batters out, that is at 74%. And he has no first pitch strike that leads to a walk, zero. And first pitch strikes that lead to hit, he's at 26% right now. And he has had nine zero walk innings of the nine innings he's pitched, like I said, given up zero walks on the year. And he has had only one wild pitch. That's a look at Brooks Crawford. And then a quick look at Cody Morris for South Carolina on the year, 3.38 ERA, 2-0 and on the season, 10.2 innings pitched, or 10 and two-thirds. He's given up six hits, four runs, all earned, three walks, and nine strikeouts. So it should be... A good game tomorrow. You would expect it. it's supposed to be great weather. A little windy, of course. Uh, like I said, first pitch scheduled for 3 p.m. at Floor Field. And in neutral site games, or actually let, at Floor Field, South Carolina leads the series 4-3, to three, which opened in 2006. First game there was between, or between the two teams was in 2010. 
So obviously, if Clemson wins tomorrow, it'll be tied at four. If South Carolina wins, they'll take a two-game advantage at Floor Field. Uh, South Carolina leads the series at Founders Park, now nine to four. Since Founders Park opened in two thousand nine, it was eight to four going into the night. They win tonight, so they lead the series now nine to four. And Clemson leads the series at Doug's Kingsmore, which opened in 1970, 51-28. They will play their Sunday first pitch, scheduled for 2 p.m. in that one. With the win tonight, South Carolina advances to 7-3 and three on the year. Clemson drops their first game, and it's the first road game they've played. So it was a great game, great pitching. You just made a couple mistakes at critical times, but they dropped their first game. They go to 8 and 1 on the year. And look look for this to be a great series. I don't think tonight's just an outlier. I think this is going to be a really closely contested series. I think the bats are probably going to open up a little bit more tomorrow uh, for Sunday's game. Right now, of course, Jake Higginbotham, the left-hander out of Clemson is scheduled to go for Clemson, and USC has yet to announce a pitcher for Sunday, so we will update you whenever that information is released. But again, South Carolina defeats Clemson at Founders Park in Columbia, South Carolina tonight to open the series. They defeat them 3-2, to two, and the game tomorrow at Floor Field between both teams. First pitch scheduled for 3 o'clock, Brooks Crawford for Clemson, and... Cody Morris for South Carolina. Look for it to be a great game. This has been an update on the Palmetto Series rivalry here in South Carolina. Tomorrow is the Reedy River rivalry. That's really hard to say. But look for that to be a great game. And this series just gets started. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the rest of it. Thank you for listening.